everyone, welcome to another video. My name's April, also known as Monkey Mint Hacker Online, and I do studio vlogs and sometimes art videos. Today I'm gonna do a get to know me video because I just hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is crazy. Um, this time last year I hadn't even reached a thousand. I was probably like 500 or so, so I just wanted to say hi to every new person that's joined or found or has enjoyed uh, these videos in the last few months and I wanted to kind of do a little get to know me better video. So I got some questions from Instagram, a couple from YouTube and one from Twitter, one or two from Twitter. So I'm going to go through all of those. But first I'm going to answer a question that came up in my last Q&A and that is about my username, Monkey Mintaka. So I thought that would be a good place to start. So it's not actually a very exciting story at all. Basically it just, was just a typo and I stuck with it. So back in the day, I think it was 2004, maybe earlier, I got on DeviantArt, which I'm sure a lot of you did. Um, back in the day, I did a lot of digital art, but it was kind of like almost tracing. It was called Vector or Vexel, which is where you kind of like trace an object. You do it in lots and lots of different layers and you kind of build up a image from it. So it wasn't, it wasn't, I don't know, it wasn't really real art. I don't really think it wasn't very creative, but I really enjoyed it at the time. And I met a lot of really nice people on DeviantArt. And at the time I was reading a book by Wilbur Smith. It's a series of books set in Egypt. And one of the characters in it was called Mintaka or Mintaka. I'm not quite sure the pronunciation, but I call it Mintaka. And Mintaka is the third star on Orion belt in the constellation. I thought that was pretty cool. So I decided to have my username as Mintaka. And my password was going to be Monkey because in my family, I don't know why, there's a lot of primate nicknames going on. I was always called Apes because my name's April. My brother was called Monkey Boy for some reason. My mum just called my brother Monkey Boy. And my sister, my mum just called her Monkey. So I don't know why. A lot of monkey themed names. So I just decided to use the password Monkey. Somewhere along the line, I got it wrong. And I accidentally put in Monkey instead of the password I put it in to like the username and into the password and it ended up being Monkey Mintaka and instead of changing it I thought that's kind of cool it rolls off the tongue so I stuck with it and that's literally the story it was just me not understanding how to use a keyboard but I really like the name I use it for everything even like my gamer my gamer tags when I'm playing online games and stuff so some of my friends call me apes and Martin calls me monkey sometimes as like a little nickname my mum calls me apes, so it just kind of fits, I kind of like it. So let's move on to the questions. I got quite a few about how um, I spend my time, like how I find time to fit everything in. So I think I'm going to use those questions as, a own, as their own video because I've been thinking about doing that for a while now. And I really like that question, so thanks for asking it. It will be its own separate video. First question, quite a few people ask me this. I don't know why people are so fascinated. But I had about four people ask me how old I am. And one person, Thin Mahmoodi, asked me how young I was. Thank you. I like I like that question. Um, I'm 36, I think. I actually had to work this out the other day. So I was born in 1984. Best year. They wrote a book about it as well. Check it out. And uh, yeah, that's it. I don't really think about my age much. I do remember when I was 27, I didn't want to get older. So I had a 27th birthday for like three years until I turned 30. Then I was like, might as well just turn 30 now, you know? But I never really think about my age until someone asks me. And then sometimes I tell them the wrong age because I kind of can't remember until I work it out. But that's it. Uh, 36, 36 years young. Now we have three food questions. It must have been close to dinner when people were asking these. Rosie asks, do you like jacket potatoes? What's your favourite topping? Yes, I do like jacket potatoes. Who doesn't? For my friends in other parts of the world, you may call them baked potato. I think I actually call them baked potatoes more than jacket potatoes. But basically, who who doesn't like a baked potato? They are delicious. My favourite toppings are probably in England. There's a brand called Vivira, and they have like a plant kebab meat which is really good and I like it with that and hummus and salad and then recently we've also been doing like um, a Mexican plant mince with lots of like uh, peppers and salad and then also homemade guacamole that's really good too but you can't really go wrong with beans either can you Elenaki or Elenake I always I never know how to pronounce her username 
asked me what my fave snack is and right now I had to stop buying it because I could literally eat an entire block. It's a cheese we have here in the UK called Via Life. It's called Epic Mature Cheese. It's vegan and I have that with Rivita cracker bread and I have to make the Rivita cracker bread be out in the air for a few hours or a couple of days so they get a little bit stale. <laughs> I know that sounds really gross but I just like my crackers a bit stale, okay? Too much crunch is too much. So um, I had to stop buying the cheese because I literally went through about three blocks in a month. It's not healthy guys, I'm pretty sure it's made from pure coconut oil. So these days I'm trying to be a little bit healthier with my snacking, maybe fruit. I guess. Bit boring. Bootleg Nerd, also known as Martin, my boyfriend, asks me, what's for dinner? Well, when this video goes out on Thursday, I don't know what's for dinner. Maybe you can make it tonight? Lindsay Thomas Art asked two very lovely questions. One was about how I find time to make uh, art with all the stuff I do, like full-time job and sleeping. And the other one was um, about making videos and if they've improved my confidence and I actually really want to make a video about starting YouTube and how I gained the confidence to start it because I was really nervous when I first started it so I think these two questions are going to make great uh, individual videos so thank you Lindsay for asking those definitely answer them in a future video. Nadine SC713 asked how did I get started in the field of animation? I think I um, answered this in my last question and answer, so I'll just do it really quickly. I basically went into, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew, I kind of thought I wanted to do graphic design. So I went into that after school and I really didn't want to do it. I, I hate graphic design, logos, business cards, the worst. So then I took a year off and I traveled and I came back and I decided to do this new course that they had in my university, which was about digital media. And that did lots of film, website, design, Photoshop, Illustrator, animation, everything all together. And then they split you in the last year, in the last two years, you could do film or you could do animation. So I did 3D animation and that's basically how I got into it. And then I moved to England from New Zealand. I lost all of my portfolio, all of my work, everything because my hard drive broke on the journey over. So I had to start again. But instead of starting again, I worked in a pub. I worked in several pubs. For four years, travelled, was not all pair, taught English and basically had to start all over again. So I did a master's in animation in 2012, I think, or 2013. And here we are today. So I used to do a lot of 3D animation in my last jobs. Now I do, jeez, oh, what do I do? Now I'm a motion graphic designer, so I do more videos, 2D animations and things like that. So um, I've done a lot of different kind of stuff in the past. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up, but it's a journey, right? And Nadine also asked, do you think it's important for digital artists to use traditional tools to maintain their ability? And I find this a very tricky question because I still, I'm learning every day. I've only just gotten back into drawing and art about two, two and a half years ago now. Before then I did do a lot of digital art, but like I said before, it wasn't really like creative. It was kind of almost copying. So I find that a tricky question to ask because I personally feel like I'm still learning. But I don't think that any artist needs to use both if they don't want to. Like if you just have Procreate or you have a Wacom tablet um, or any, you know, just any form of digital tool and that's what you want to do, I definitely think you can improve just doing digital stuff. But personally for me, I love traditional. I love getting my hands messy. I love just the feel of all the, the, the things in your hands, the pencil shavings, the sketchbooks. You know, so I think there's something special about traditional media, even though I still love my iPad. Pixie Sticks asked, is there any genre of music you can't stand? I would probably have to say anything that Martin listens to. <laughs> because we sit next to each other all day in the office now that we're both working from home. And sometimes I'll say to him, should we listen to some music? Because normally we just have our headphones on. And he'll put the music on and like 50 minutes in, I say to him, I think I'm going to put my headphones on now. He doesn't like the music I listen to either. I don't know about genres. I just know I'm quite picky So I'm definitely not one of those people that say I like all types of music because I I really don't I'm quite picky, but I don't really know genres I just know when I hear a sound that offends my ears. I Don't want to listen to that sound anymore. Uh, maybe like oh jazz. I Found it. Okay jazz smooth jazz 
rough jazz. Any other type of jazz? No. No. Mismina.pt asks, you talk about horror movies in one of your latest vlogs. I did. I agree with it all. Well, that's because horror movies are amazing. How about TV shows? So, TV shows. I mean, TV shows are amazing. I think these days TV is like better than films. I don't know if you're talking specifically about horror TV shows, but if you are, yes to all of them. Oh, I also started watching Emily in Paris the other day. I wasn't going to. I thought, this looks ridiculous. But I just started watching it and it's actually really good and I love it. So I'm not embarrassed about that at all. Liz from Lizzie Art asks, what's something you haven't done yet that you would love to do? So, oh, I guess it would have to be traveling. Uh, I have traveled before, but traveling to the countries I haven't, like that I really want to go to. Like I really want to go to Japan. Uh, all of South America looks amazing. Mexico, Egypt. I really want to go to some of the uh, northern countries like northern European like Iceland and Greenland, Norway, Sweden. Just travel guys. I just want to travel. I know something specific that I want to do that I haven't done yet and have my own dog because I had dogs when I was younger as a family, uh, like a family dog but I really want, I can't wait for me and Martin to be able to get our own house so we can have our own dog and our own cat and um, just be a dog mum. That would be lovely. Sweet Pea asks, maybe you can mention your favourite brands of paper, brushes, pens, paints, etc. I actually have a video that I did a while ago, I think it was, like, I did a clean, a spring clean, and I showed all of my favourite materials. So I definitely link that. But some of my absolute favourite, Holbein acrylic wash, which are right here. I love them. And my iPad for Procreate, I love it. My coloured pencils, Faber-Castell Polychromos. Paintbrushes, I honestly couldn't tell you, haven't found one I like yet and sketchbooks i am still trying to find the perfect sketchbook and the perfect paper so i'm on a mission if you have one that you can recommend let me know and also if you have a good paintbrush you can recommend for acrylic wash let me know because i keep damaging all of mine i just don't think i have the right paintbrush or maybe i'm just like crazy with it you know maybe i should just be a bit more delicate aurora art asks uh, where i learned to paint where did you learn to paint when I was very young, I took art lessons in school and I also did lots of art in school. So I did painting, design, illustration, graphic design. But I didn't do a lot of traditional media until maybe two or three years ago. And I didn't really paint until my 100 day project, which I just completed uh, a couple of months ago. So honestly, I'm still learning how to paint. Definitely enjoying it. My favorite is uh, the acrylic wash. I have also dabbled in watercolor, but acrylic wash is definitely my favorite because I feel like you have more control over it and it just suits like the style I'm going for a little bit better. So where I learned to paint, I think it's just a combination of remembering stuff from my childhood and experimenting and finding things that you like and not being scared to experiment because that's the fun part about uh, learning and about finding out what type of artist you want to be. Dream Life Planning Co. asks what kind of coloured pencils I use when I draw. Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils are my absolute favourite. I have the entire set of them. I think maybe I need to pair them down again because they have them all in these two cups here. And sometimes when I'm trying to look for colours, I get a little bit overwhelmed because there's too many of them. And sometimes the colour combinations don't work very well. But those are the pencils I use. I definitely recommend them. Dasha Fitzgerald asks, what is something you can't wait to do once COVID is over? So, um, to be honest, my life hasn't really changed much, like personally, with the whole COVID thing. The one thing that has changed is that I have to commute to work anymore. That's a good thing, and I don't want that to change. But I guess it would have to be like going on holiday maybe, going on a trip. We were actually gonna have my mum and her partner down for Easter and we had flights booked for them, but everything got canceled. So we actually have tickets to fly. Like we have vouchers that we can use. I don't know when they run out, but as soon as everything's kind of like back to normal-ish and we can travel without restrictions, I think Matt and I really want to take a trip to Tenerife. So that is, I guess, the thing I'm most looking forward to. L-Y-J-N-W-N-G asks, what movies, books, graphic novels inspire you and your art? I'm not really sure actually if movies and books and stuff inspire me. I guess the art of storytelling would inspire me because I've always wanted to tell stories. 
even before I wanted to draw I wanted to write books and I've always wanted to tell stories that's kind of like why I got into film and animation because I really loved the art of storytelling through that medium so in that sense books and movies and comic books definitely inspire me um and then one last one from Instagram is from Jenny from J Design and she asks me bring all the weird stuff which I'm guessing she wants a couple of weird facts about me so I was trying to think of a couple one of them is I believe in poltergeists I definitely had a couple of poltergeist experiences when I was younger doors locking and unlocking lights turning on and off uh, electrical equipment turning on and off, things flying across the room, things in places where they weren't just a minute ago, stuff like that. So, not sure if I believe in ghosts and apparitions because I've never seen that myself, but I definitely think there's something out there. The truth is out there. And another weird thing about me is that I really love putting a couple of strange things on toast. I love mashed potato on toast. It's just a thing I had when I was younger and I just love it. Mashed potato on toast and noodles on toast. So, is that weird enough? I think so, right? So I've got a couple on YouTube. One's from Miss Mina, who also asked me how I balance things, uh, art, my full-time job, having a side business, all of that kind of stuff, which I'm definitely going to do in a separate video. But thank you for asking. And another one is by Caroline Shergold, who asked, what's my favourite tool? She actually asked a few questions, but... One is, what's my favourite tool? I don't know if you mean a garden tool, or a kitchen tool, or an art tool. So I went with kitchen tool. And I definitely would think tongs. Because you can flip things, stir things, pick things up and put them in your mouth if they're too hot. Tongs, definitely my favourite kitchen tool. If you were an animal, what animal would you be? I actually give this a lot of thought, you know. There was a series back in the day called Animorphs, if you guys remember that, about this group of teenagers that could turn into animals. And I always thought it would be really cool to be able to turn into an animal. I think everyone would probably choose a bird, because you could fly. I really like the idea of being a cat, because they just do whatever they want. No one seems to care if they're in a bad mood, or if they don't want to be petted, or if they're like snooty. You know, everyone always just loves them because they're cats and I think that's like their personality. So maybe cat or a sloth because I'm pretty sure that's my spirit animal. <laughs> she also asks, where do you hope to see yourself in a year with your business? I've only been doing Etsy since June, so a few months. I've been doing YouTube for like two years, two and a half years now, but it's only just picked up in the last year. I honestly couldn't tell you where I think I'm going to be in a year. I guess it just depends on how much time I can put into it. Like, I do have a full-time job. Yeah, I think that's the main thing, really, is time, isn't it? How much time I have to make products, to go do social media stuff, to promote, to do all that kind of crazy stuff. So, I honestly can't tell. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. I don't know. I don't have a goal. Because if I have to go back to work in another six months and commute every day, that's going to chop down a lot of my time that I can sp I'm spending at home right now doing stuff but eventually this is where I want to be I want to be full-time doing this doing art doing a patreon Etsy YouTube have my own shop maybe doing like illustrations and magazines and stuff you know the whole package I don't know if anyone I know from work is watching this but I don't think it's a secret and she also asks top tip for someone wanting to start YouTube and a shop so I think I might go more into that in my in a video where I talk about how I started YouTube and stuff. But just quickly a tip I guess would be not to worry about other people and what they're going to think of you and if you're going to fail, if you're not going to fail, if you're going to be successful, if you're not going to be successful because you have to start somewhere so you may as well just uh, give it a go. Just pop a video up, you'll learn as you go, you'll improve. Hearing your voice, you won't hate it as much. Editing, you'll learn different techniques. Lighting, I mean, look, I can't even use my camera right, you know? I just learned like a couple of weeks ago how to focus on my face. So, if you want to start, just start. You don't even have to make it public. Just do it for yourself. But I will definitely try and talk more about that in a future video, so keep an eye out for that one. And then she also asks, uh, would I recommend Etsy? So, I, again, definitely a noob with selling things and Etsy. I've only been on Etsy since June. Uh, I haven't been at any other platforms, so I can't really compare the two. 
I do know that Etsy is a search engine, so if people are searching for things, they will find you. Whereas if you have your own website, they may not. Uh, I've had a lot of people, I think, mainly come through Instagram or YouTube, but also I've had a very successful guinea pig uh, group of people. <laughs> that's, that's a strange way of putting it. But my guinea pigs have been very successful and I did not know that was gonna happen. I didn't know there were people out there that were looking for guinea pig merchandise. So they somehow they have found me and they like my guinea pigs. And I, if I wasn't on Etsy, they wouldn't have found me. They would have found someone else's guinea pigs. From my very, very limited knowledge of Etsy, they do take a lot of fees, but I think if you're starting out, if you're new, like me, I think Etsy is probably the way to go. And then on Twitter, I have a couple. One is from Amanda, who asks, if I could sum up the internet in one sentence, what would it be? Um, procrastination? Procrastination? Doorway? Technical? Wi-Fi? Broadband? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's just go with procrastination. What's the most imaginative insult you can come up with? I don't know. Honestly, I try not to insult people. Um, but if I had to insult someone, it would probably end with your mum. <laughs> going 90s on that one. Okay. And then Darkest Raven Design asked me, any pet peeves? How long do you guys have? <laughs> There's a lot of pet peeves, guys. I'm not like happy as happy-go-lucky as I like to think I am sometimes. Things annoy me a lot. In movies, when people order food and don't eat it, very annoying. I also don't like people when they try and skip lines. Like in England, we love our cues and our lines. Line skipping isn't cool. Being rude to people that work in restaurants and retail isn't cool either. Someone who used to work in a restaurant. I don't like that. There's just so many things. So many pet peeves. If I, if I had to think about all of them, I would get annoyed. I'll just go with those three, I think. People not eating food they've ordered in movies. Line skipping. And being rude to people that work in the service industry. That's it. Don't mess with people that serve your food, you know? So that was my Q&A. Hopefully you enjoyed watching whatever was on the screen. I think it was probably Bear Lost in the City, which is a prompt by a Penis Illustrator, which I also have to do today for uh, for my Instagram post. And I hope that you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more. I really love doing these question and answer videos. I'm always scared when I ask people if they have questions that no one's gonna ask me questions. So if you asked me a question, thank you so much. And I will probably do another one of these in a few more months because I think they're really fun. But for now, that is all. I hope that you have a lovely day and I will be having a vlog up on Monday. So pop back for that one. And also before I go quickly, I am having a 20% off sale in my Etsy shop for getting to uh, 2K subscribers here on YouTube. So I'll pop the code below. It is 242K, which you can use at checkout and it'll give you 20% off everything in my shop. So I will say goodbye for now and uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.